Sooners add three out of the transfer portal, and one of them has a pretty unique name. I want to talk about all of them here coming up in just a minute. What's good, everybody? It's your boy Jay here with Unfair Sports, talking college football, OU football, and honestly, sports in general. Thank you for checking us out here on the YouTube channel. While you are here, please hit the like button that lets YouTube know that I actually made a video that matched the description. Subscribe if you want to get more of this content and share. Why? Because sharing is caring. And I love to provide you guys with as much content as possible, especially as we go into the football season. This video, we're going to talk about the recruits that Oklahoma just picked up out of the transfer portal. Looks like Brent Venables and roster are taking advantage of this portal. And let's talk about the growth that we're seeing and what it kind of means. So over the last week, you all may have noticed that Oklahoma has picked up a few players out of the transfer portal. There was an announcement last week. We actually had two quarterbacks that came from the portal as of this past weekend. And then we also added a wide receiver. Much needed depth. So to solidify the backup position at quarterback with experience, they went ahead and turned to the transfer portal, which I appreciate and I applaud because it's something that you should probably do when you're looking for more so experience when you're very inexperienced behind your starting quarterback. And I'd say they hit a prize, hit a prize maybe one or two. Now, is it gold? Is it silver, nickel, platinum, you know, uranium, unobtainium? I don't know. But we do know, know that at least one of those names is a fun one. That we're gonna have, we're gonna make jokes about for the next few, hopefully years. So please indulge and enjoy this. So let's start off with the uh, one, the first one that came. So Davis Bevel, which kind of feels like a Fansville descendant, but nonetheless, he's a quarterback that played at Pitt. He entered the transfer portal in March, and that was kind of expected. Because when uh, Keaton Slavis, which I butchered his name on a video a few months back, thank you to those in the comments that helped me with that name, he came to Pitt after leaving USC when Riley and Cole went there as he knew that he wasn't going to be the man, the man. So Slavis left, so did Jackson Dart. So that left an opening when going to Pitt. It made it me expect that their quarterback room was going to shrink, and it did. So Davis comes over. He didn't play a lot of ball, but he played a, some. His most meaningful minutes was against was at Michigan State in the Peach Bowl. Uh, 14 for 18, had a touchdown and a pick. Almost willed Pitt to a victory. He played because Kenny the Slide Pickett decided to opt out and went to the NFL draft. And then their backup quarterback, uh, Nick Patty, got hurt. And so... Bevel jumped in there, played. He had a few more starts outside of that. So he's had about six or seven, uh, six or seven games as far as experience in getting in and playing, which is helpful. So that puts him at the chance of being the backup at Oklahoma behind Dylan Gabriel, unless he feels like he can take the job. I don't know because I don't really, we don't, we haven't seen a lot of them. Now, He's size wise, spec wise. Let's talk about that. I mean, he's six five, two hundred pound, pro style quarterback is what he came in at, and he's out of Greenville, South Carolina. There's that Ville again, so Bevel, Greenville, Fansville, all the Villes. Love it. Those the Villes are strong in his family roots, and he entered the portal, like I said, because they there's a lot of changes that happened there and it looked like that he probably wasn't gonna get a chance to start so it's good to see him move around he picked Oklahoma I'm guessing they convinced him opportunity to be this the backup quarterback or even going into coaching could help so that is the first one the next one is of course the fun one is we have general booty yes the name is exactly what you think it was I hope all of you saw this over the weekend but that is the name that is the guy that everyone's gonna have fun with this next few years. Now, General Booty is a descendant of a long lineage of booties that play college football. His father is Abram Booty, former wide receiver at LSU. His uncle, Josh Booty, played quarterback at LSU, and he played in Major League Baseball. I remember Josh Booty very well. Abram, eh, but I do remember Josh Booty. And then the one we all should know is John David Booty, who played quarterback at USC during the Pete 
Carol era. So you know this guy, you know the name, you probably recall most of the family, at least Josh Booty, because Josh was pretty known, played some time in the NFL or whatnot, like I say, he played major league baseball and was at LSU during some of their good times. So in the less mile era. So yeah, pretty amped about him coming in because he is a JUCO transfer. He wasn't very heavily recruited. So he went to Tyler Junior, Junior College in Texas. Went down there and cooked. He ate. Top yards in uh, the National Junior College uh, uh, Athletic Association, NJCAA instead of NCAA. He had 3,115 yards through for 25 touchdowns. And one of the games that got him national notoriety is that he threw for like 528 yards and eight touchdowns with 38 completions in a game. That's big. That means that he knows how to break down what's going on. He knows how to go out there and make the magic happen. And I think, honestly, he may be someone that will truly compete with Dylan Gabriel a little bit more than Davis Bevel. Now, with that, Booty has three years left of eligibility. So he's going to come in here with the opportunity to play for three years and so we're going to have a lot of competing. And now a buddy of mine, Chance, put this out there. He said, with the new Juco commit, thought this was kind of funny, OU at one point on the sidelines will have Joshua Eaton, Marcus Majors, and General Booty next to each other. I hope they stand next to each other with their names back there. If you don't get it, pictures up there. Enjoy. We will not grow up here. We're here to have fun. That's the reason why sports and college football exist. So shout out, Chance. That was hilarious. Great catch there. And the last player that joins this regime of three players coming from the portal is J is uh, Javian Hester, AKA JJ. Now JJ is coming back home. He is a Tulsa boy, went to Booker T Washington high school in Tulsa, same place that Gentry Williams went to. And he played college ball at Missouri. He redshirted there, and he played last year as a redshirt freshman. Now, the cool thing is with him, he had 12 catches, 225 yards receiving, and a nice burner catch against, I think it was um, South Missouri State. He just dusted him, caught the ball across the middle, and just gone. He's 6'3", so he's nice height, and he's fast. That's awesome. It's going to add to the plethora of receivers we currently have in size. And he was a former four-star recruit based upon 24-7's composite rate, uh, rating system. Four-star recruit, that's going to help a lot with Cody Jackson leaving and going to the portal. I believe this is going to really grow the wide receiver room, period. So... With that, with these additions, what does this mean for the team? It's usually the one thing everybody asks. What does it mean? If we add all these guys, what does it do? So, JJ gives us the depth and some experience. Wide receiver that's got experience. So, you can add him with the OEs, Jalil Farouk, um, Mims. I mean, the, the wide receiver landscape is going to be good. And then Jalen Gibson, the big tall boy that's out there, just going to be dipping on folks. It gives a lot of good players that can transition in and out through Libby's system. Because I think Jeff Libby's system is going to be a lot of, because it's going to be so fast paced, you're going to be doing a lot of subbing. And so you got to have those guys that can go in and be impactful on the spot. I think Hester can give us that. And he's from Oklahoma. I'm so glad that Venables is going after the guys locally that OU's old regime did not go after. He's trying to grab some more of these local guys when he can. I love that. And that's going to be a big play for OU there. And if a quarterback, that's a little bit different. So the one thing you got to remember is, is no matter what, you need to have a quarterback in place that's got experience, and you probably need a backup that has experience. Like Ralph Rucker has a little bit. I think he's played some garbage time minutes. Michael Bowens did not play last year. Who else do you really have that has some experience in the game? That's where Davis comes in, uh, Bevel, as well as Booty comes in. That gives you the experience to go behind Dylan Gabriel just in case, God forbid, something happens to him. You can't expect them not. And then so with the two recruits we've got in, we got Nick Evers, who is a freshman. I think he's probably going to red shirt, which would be a good thing. He kind of wanted to come in, learn the system, and then go out. So it might be good for him to go ahead and red shirt and grow from that. And do I think this is going to scare off like Jackson Arnold, who just committed a few months back? 
Nah. I think Jackson wants to walk in and compete. I think he feels like Oklahoma's the place for him. Oklahoma produces a lot of players that come in and take the jobs and end up excelling from Baker Mayfield doing it, Kyler Murray. Sam Bradford was a very not very well recruited, highly recruited guy. A lot of these Jason White, a lot of these players didn't get recruited as much as you would have they would have hoped, but they walked into Oklahoma and said, We're gonna go ahead and do this thing. They went in and they took over. That's something I think that Jackson Arnold's gonna try to do when he comes in, give him enough time, probably give him like two years of starting time by the time he gets here. So I don't think he's gonna be afraid from the competition. I love that. It's always a plus. So with that, that is three players that have joined Oklahoma. Davis Bevel, you got General Booty, and then J.J. Hester. There was also a recruit that committed three-star. I'll go details on that player another time. But thanks for tuning in. Please hit like and subscribe. Let us know what you like, don't like, what more you want to see. Um, We've got a lot more content coming here in the future. It's quiet time for the most part, so we'll be keeping up with the recruits. We'll be putting together some fun stuff. That way you all can say that you enjoy yourself with us. And then when football season hits, you'll see a hell of a lot of me. You may see a video every day. So just keep that prepared on your minds. So with that, if you are a Thunder fan, I'm going to be at the Down for Dunk team's lottery party over at the Jones Assembly on Tuesday afternoon watching the draft lottery. Come by, grab a drink with me. We can chop it up OU football. We can talk Thunderball, whatever. Come find me. So it's this Tuesday, which is the 17th. I'll be there. Hit us up if you're watching this afterwards. Sorry I missed you, but we there will be other opportunities for all to, us to get together here in Oklahoma City area. If you're in town, holler at me. So with that, chop it up, John, a few days. Peace.